Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress and welcome to 14.2 Launch Week and today's webinar, What's New for ASP.NET Web Forms and MVC, presented by Web Program Manager Mahul Harry. In this webinar, learn about the new products and libraries shipping inside our ASP.NET and MVC subscriptions. Mahul will be discussing updates to our award-winning data grid, our new rich text editor for the web, and how you can build a responsive web UI with DevExpress components for ASP.NET. Thank you for joining us. I will now hand things over to Mohul Harry. Thank you very much, Amanda. Welcome, everyone. This is what's new in version 14.2 for the DevExpress suite of ASP.NET Web Forms and MVC extensions. As Amanda mentioned, I am Mohul Harry. I am the program manager for the web technologies. And there's a lot to cover today. So let's just get right into it. Today, we're going to be covering uh, new controls, improved controls. There's a lot in this release, and we're going to get into everything, uh, just about everything. And I've broken it down into what I think is the most useful items for you. Now, there's a really great story in 14.2. Uh, the main one, which starts with the rich edit, and then uh, I think the other big story has to do with responsive web design, which I'll talk about at the end. Now. Uh, so you, you definitely want to stick around for that. But in between that, uh, you know, uh, the flagship controls like the grid view, spreadsheet, they've all gotten great new features as well. And we've done a, we've done a, uh, some useful improvements to our MVC line as well. So we're going to get into all that. Now let's start with the rich edit control. This is the newest control to join the ASP.NET line. Now, whenever we create a control, Whenever we do something, we, we ask, you know, why, why are we doing this? What's the reason? What's the story behind it? And for the rich edit, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, what happened was we have the HTML editor control. We've had it for several years. It's a great control. It does what it's set out to do, which is edit HTML. But what we found was our customers were using it in ways that uh, went beyond, and they wanted to do things like edit rich text. Uh, so while the HTML editor can open a doc file, it still converts things to HTML, which is what its purpose was. And we wanted to uh, address that need because we heard for many years and many uh, customers. And so, you know, understanding our customers helps us make better products, features, and help us, us prioritize. And so about a year ago, we got to work and said, okay, we're going to make a rich edit control, and we're going to make it the best rich edit control for the web that's out there in ASP.NET today. And we have created what I believe is a very unique approach and this beautiful rich edit control is born. Now the first thing you'll notice is that it's inspired by Microsoft Word. Now Word, I believe, is the de facto desktop editor for not just uh, uh, Windows but probably for most uh, platforms out there. So for example, if, you, if, you're, on, if you're on a Mac OS or something, you're going to look for Word. Word uh, uh, provides a user interface that I believe uh, is probably unmatched out there. Now, let's take a look, quick look at it. Now, in Word, obviously, you can create great documents. So, for example, I can create a quick document really easy. But more than that, it has a WYSIWYG feel to it. It has a beautiful ribbon interface at the top that uh, provides all the navigation that you need for setting fonts, paragraph styles, and so forth. But more than that, what WYSIWYG stands for what, what you what you see is what you get. And what that means is that what I create here can be outputted when I go ahead and print this document. So that it's a, it's a great way for uh, creating these documents uh, on the fly. Now, Word has a lot of useful features built into it. So for example, the ribbon, when I click, uh, when I don't find all the settings here, I can go ahead and bring up a custom dialog to do that. Now, this is something that your users know and love. And this is what our customers, you, were asking us to create, and, I'm, and I'm, this is what we have go ahead and done. So let's take a look at the rich edit control. In 14.2, you're going to find for HP.NET Web Forms this rich editor, and it provides a lot of great functionality. So the first thing you'll notice right away is that it has a ribbon interface, and this is using the DevExpress ribbon control. Now, on top of that, for the web, you've got a rich text editor, a true rich text editor that's inspired by Microsoft Word. So for example, you have the capability to cut, copy, and paste, to set up font styles, paragraph styles, the default styles for the paragraphs, 
insert tabs, page layout that lets you uh, set up different column breaks and so forth, page breaks. And so it's it's a very uh, familiar interface that you know uh, from Microsoft Word. So what's also great about it is that this document, uh, this can work with multiple different formats out there, including Microsoft Excel, but also plain text and um, uh, several other formats, as we'll see. Now, it's uh, very easy to get started with as well. So let's take a quick look in Visual Studio, how easy it is to use Word. Now here, I've got a simple solution that has essentially just a default ASPX file that's empty, and I've added just a documents folder. These are some documents that I want to work with. So what I'll do is inside of the default ASPX file, I'm going to add the ASPX rich edit control. Now you'll find this under the common controls under DX14.2 next to the HTML editor, and I can just simply drag and drop it inside my little div here. And immediately I have a ribbon interface, I've got the rich edit, it's ready to go. All the dialogues are built in, all the functionality is built right into it. Now, the one thing that we recommend, right now I can hit run and I've got a working rich editor, but the one thing we really recommend that you do is because you'll be working with documents that you provide a document directory. Now by default, we're gonna choose something like app data and call it work directory. But I've got a folder here called documents, so I'm gonna set it to my documents folder so that when I am in the rich edit, I can uh, look it up real easily. Now the other thing is I'll set the width to 100% and I'll set a, a slightly larger height to something like 650 pixels. All right, now let's take a look at this in the browser. Now, right away, by just dragging and dropping, setting a documents folder, I've got a working rich edit control. And because I've set the width, I've also got responsive capabilities. As you may remember, the ribbon control that we have introduced in previous releases supports the capability to be resized. So when I collapse it, the ribbon interface collapses as well. So you get this capability of a responsive control built right into it. And this is something that we do with mo most of our modern controls with DevExpress, and I'll get into that a little bit later. So immediately, I can start adding some text in here, like, Welcome. Oops. Welcome. And uh, I can go ahead and start adding any text that I want to. I can even set up font styles for it. So if I don't like this Calibri font, I can choose Arial Black. I can change the size. I can change the color, the underlining, all the sorts of good stuff. I can even change paragraph styles. Now, you saw there that in Microsoft Word, when you wanted to bring up a separate dialog, you can do that by bringing up this little dialog launcher. Now we've at, upgraded our ribbon to add this capability as well. So for example, these dialogs are all built in. So you get extended functionality to define paragraph styles, font styles, and so forth. And it's also got a full screen view. So for example, if you allow, want to allow your users to work in a full screen mode, you can do that very easily. And what's great about this is there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts built right into it here as well. So if I hit F11, I'm, I'm setting it to full screen mode. So this is a great feature. So I don't have it have I don't have to have the control take up the entire screen. I can have it into one section of my website, and when they are ready to keep editing and take up the full screen, you can they can just hit F11, or they can go to the View tab and hit full screen. So a lot of great features now. There's a lot of functionality built into it, and um, we have the actual developers in our session today. If you've got specific questions about, hey, does this support horizontal ruler? Does it support images? Does it support undo, redo, clipboard, printing, client-server synchronization? We can help answer all those questions. We don't have a lot of time, so please go ahead and ask those questions. Our, our excellent support and devs are help, ready to help you answer any questions. The key takeaway I want you to remember from this control is that it's got a lot of fun, great functionality uh, like a built-in document manager. So when I point it to the documents folder, I can easily open a, a folder, a, a, a document. Now, because I started editing this document, it, it's telling me, hey, listen, you've got some unsaved work here. If you open another document, you're going to lose that work. Do you want it to lose that work? I can say yes, no, and say I'm going to say go ahead and uh, lose that work. 
And so what's great is that because uh, ASP.NET is a server-based technology, you can see that when I expose my folders on the server side, I can easily uh, open any one of them. And I can go ahead and save them, or I can even export them to PDF or something like that. Uh, another great feature that I love is not just PDF, we also support DOCX, TXT, HTML, and I really love this one, EPUB. So if I get the inspiration and say, hey, listen, I'm going to write my great American novel and then send it around to my friends so they can load it on their Kindles, you can do that as well. So it, it supports a lot of different publishing formats. And so this, I believe, little features like this is what makes the control really great. And uh, they can go ahead and download it as a copy or they can save it on the server directly. Now, you also have print capabilities. So for example, if I wanted to, when I print this, I get the default print dialog from Firefox, or uh, of course, each browser has their own different uh, dialogue. All right, so the key thing to remember about this control is that it is a preview version in this release. Now, uh, we did that because we're not done with it. It's, it's a huge control. Even though we've been working on it a long time, we, we created this control with a lot of client-side functionality. In fact, it has some uh, a special JavaScript that we wrote just in this new release that talks back to the server. It's got a lot of great functionality that I think you're going to come to love about this control. So what it means with a preview version is you're welcome to use it. We want your feedback, but we're not done with it. Meaning that if you find a client-side API within the you know, next release or two when we're, before we decide to release, we may decide to change up a couple of things if we find a better approach, if we find we want to optimize something. So go ahead and use it. Just be aware that we may change a couple of calls, but we'll definitely make it more performant. Or we'll definitely work out any bugs that you report. And that's why we welcome you to use it because it, it's sort of an agile approach as well. We want you guys to go ahead and start using it because we feel there's enough functionality there. So knock yourselves out. Now, <clears throat> the other key thing about the rich edit and the takeaway that I want you to remember is that the rich edit gives your end users the ability to create, edit, and save rich text documents in a browser. And because DevExpress is cross-platform compatible, meaning that no matter what operating system, no matter what browser you're using, even if it's on a mobile device, if it's a modern browser, we support it. We support all the popular modern browsers out there, including Opera, Safari on, on uh, mobile iOS, you name it. We, we're out there supporting it. And that's why I feel this rich edit is truly one of the most powerful controls that we have uh, put out there. So once again, it's a preview version, but, it, but it's got uh, WYSIWYG functionality, Microsoft Word style editing, uh, multiple themes uh, that you've come to love from DevExpress. So go ahead and uh, try this control and let it give us your feedback. All right. The next is we've got now cloud support in a couple of our controls. Now, <clears throat> The file manager is a web-based file manager. So if you're used to, for example, Windows Explorer, the file manager is the web-based equivalent of that. And what it allows you to do is work with files that you have on your ASP.NET server. Now, um, uh, one of our evangelists, Don, uh, has the, had this great idea. You know, he was playing around with Dropbox and the file manager, and he found a way to hook it up because the file manager is very extensible. And he showed this to our devs. And they said, hey, that's a great idea. So we incorporated this, not just in our file manager, but our upgo control. And we also went further and hooked it up to a few other services like Amazon Web Services and Azure. Now, the file manager can uh, connect with all these services. And the upload control connects with a couple of these services, except for Dropbox. Now, you can learn more about this feature in an upcoming webinar. Now, hang on one second. Now, in next week, our evangelist, Don, is going to be doing a webinar specifically about these technologies, about connecting these controls to the cloud, what it takes, you know, how to get your special tokens, uh, your special IDs, hook them up, and why this is such a great feature once you expose your items to the cloud, because the cloud really is the future. Uh, you know, Microsoft is betting on Azure. They're betting on how, uh, you know, because in the cloud, it's very scalable and so forth. So. I highly recommend you come check out this webinar. Don's going to get knee deep into it. It's going to answer all your great questions. All right. 
The next great feature I want to talk about is design time. This is something that we're, con as you know, we're constantly improving our controls. And one of the things that we did is if you've used our controls in other platforms like WinForms, you may remember this feature. Now, whenever you go to the smart tag, the smart tag is this little dealie right here. The smart tag will have a link in it called designer. And when you click this link, you're going to find this new designer dialog that will come up for most of our controls. Now, what this control, what this does is that it puts together several of the different dialogs that used to come up in our controls. So, for example, for a ribbon, there's a couple of different places where you can set up ribbon items, what shows up in the ribbon if you want to show up custom items, or if you want to show up, excuse, or if you want to set client side events. Now, previously, you might have set these by finding those properties inside of the uh, properties dialog. So you may have to go, well, it's in here somewhere, and I know the other one is over here somewhere. Well, now you don't have to hunt and peck for those. Now we've got them right in this beautiful designer. So for one, we've laid them out categorically in the areas that make sense. Now in the rich edit here, I've only got a couple of things. In the grid view, I've got things like summary items, I've got grouping items, and I've got client side events. So and, and column items. So in some, depending on the control, we have different items that you can go ahead and edit. And the functionality you'll find is very similar. So for example, ribbon items, they're, they're still very similar. I can create new uh, items and so forth, insert them in certain areas and delete them. But we, we made them, we jazz them up a little bit, made them look a lot more beautiful by creating these custom icons. So as you know, we, we take a special care of UI. We, you know, we're big on UI. Now the other great thing is I really love that because we have a lot of clients have functionality, functionality in our controls, We've also added uh, this capability where you can go ahead and add, cre create inside of this designer the functionality that you need. So for example, if I wanted to, I can put in some JavaScript here, and it's even got a bit of syntax highlighting. So I can you know, say, hey, there's an error here. And it notice that this is a string. So this little editor knows that this is a function, this is a string, and, the, and these little features uh, go on to kind of help you and say, oh, this is great. I got one place where I can go and take a look at all the clients and events I've got for a particular control. And I've still got the capability to go look up documents and uh, the client side API documentation if I'm all familiar with it. So this, uh, this type of functionality is available in most of our controls that have those type of dialogues. So we've done a lot of hard work. And it's not an end user feature. It's a developer feature. It's a feature for you as a developer at Design Time in Visual Studio which I believe makes the experience of working with our HP.NET controls that much better. I mean, we've, we, we know what's out there. And I am positive, 100%, that we have the best design time experience. In fact, nobody even gives you the kind of preview that we do at design time uh, with our controls. But that's a different story. All right, so let's go back and take a look. The next big feature I want to talk about is the grid view. Now, this is one of the flagship controls. This is probably one of the controls that's put us on the map. Uh, you know, when we when we first redesigned our HP.NET control several years ago, this was one of the first controls we we looked at, and it keeps getting better because we know that we're not done with it. It has a lot of great functionality. Now, one of the features that we added, and one of the main features that I love in this release, is the instant search panel. And what it does is exactly like you see. It's a Google-like feature that gives a filtering. Uh, by giving you one text box at the top, and whatever you type in here, it will search all the columns and all the rows immediately. You can set the delay and so forth. Now, what's great about this is that no longer do you have to worry, hey, does my end user know where to find uh, a specific feature and so forth? Because uh, they can easily find it. So if we take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at one of the demos here. Now you can find all the demos in the demo center, and let's take a look under filtering. Now you notice already we've got the data filter row, we've got the header filter, and previously the filter control was my favorite, but the new one is definitely search panel. And as I mentioned, I can type in something like BI, and I can say, hey, oh, okay, I'm looking for something specifically called big, and it finds it. Or what's more interesting is, let's say there's a lot of data. And typically, we don't know, but we have an idea that, okay, I'm looking for a customer, but I know they're not, I, don't, I only know that they're in Spain. 
And as I do that, immediately I've got a shorter list here. And then I can go, ah, yes, I was looking for Martin here. And so it's a very powerful feature that allows your end users to uh, filter out. And you can go ahead and customize it further by uh, you know, deciding what gets shown, whether the results are highlighted, how long the delay should be, what column names are applied to the search, all of the good things. All right, the other big feature is we've added what's fi called fixed groups. So now, when I am grouped by country here, I know at the top I am grouped, but as I scroll down, you'll notice that the grouped row is sticky, meaning that it sticks to the top. So because I'm here in Brazil, it, it sticks to the top, and it gives me a small indicator here. So it's little UI elements like this that set apart our grid. So as I go further down, oops, as I go further down, you'll notice that when I when that group row is not there at the top, it disappears. But when it's back, it tells me, hey, you're now viewing a fixed group row at the top here. So it's a small element, but I think it's a very useful one for the end users. Now, the other big item that I want to mention is exporting. We have done a tremendous job by introducing Excel Data Aware. Now, if your end users are Excel ninjas, they are going to love this feature. Why? Because let's say you're in the grid and you've grouped this item. You've summarized it. You're like, this is what I want in Excel. Now, previously, if you did all this work and you said, hey, export to Excel, well, now let's open it to Microsoft Excel here. You're going to find that, hey, what, what, what happened here? I, I had grouped all the rows and summarized them. What is this, right? In some cases, you want this. Let's say if you just wanted to print this out, this is perfect. But for some Power Excel users, they say, no, 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 no. I can do this in Excel as well, and that's what I wanted to do. And so now they can do that with this Excel Data Aware export. So now, using this approach, I can use the Excel Data Aware export, and I have my grouped rows still. I have filtering still. I've got uh, summaries that are still kept for all the rows and so forth. So I can go ahead and make a chart if I wanted to or something like that. So there's all sorts of great things that, can, that they love to do in Excel that they still have the capabilities. Now, you may be asking, hey, well, why did you keep the old approach? Well, because we wanted to keep backward compatibility. You know, we didn't want to just introduce this new thing and say, hey, this is better, because some people may still prefer the old approach. And finally, <clears throat> I want to mention uh, something I talked about on my blog, and uh, that is if you go to devexpress slash mayhole, you'll find uh, you know, all the things I'm passionate about blogging about and all the new things that we're working on. And one of the things is this .NET controls. Now, I mentioned ASP grid view is one of them, uh, but we, we did some work to improve some of the uh, uh, functionality in all of our, all of our major grids for uh, all of the platforms. Now, the reason I mention it is because some of you may go, oh, that's great. And yes, you'll find some improvements. But if you have a large database, I highly recommend that you use our server mode feature. Our server mode feature is still the best approach because it takes the work of grouping, filtering, and all the heavy lifting that shouldn't be done by a web server and puts it on the database, which is much more uh, faster at doing this. So for example, whether I go to, I've got 300,000 records here, whether I go to the fourth row, you can see, it takes a third of a second there, and it's super fast. So, uh, just keep that in mind. All right, let's move on. The spreadsheet control. Now, we introduced this in the same way that we introduced that rich edit. The spreadsheet was Excel for the web, and we introduced five major features in this release. The, one of the first one is the workbook feature. This feature allows your end users to honor what was created in Excel. So for example, uh, if we take a look, let's bring up the spreadsheet control demo from our uh, demo center. And I'll bring it up here in Firefox. And of course, you can use any feature, uh, any uh, browser. What worksheet protection basically means that in Excel, I have the capability. Now, uh, let's, look, let's view this in full screen just the way we can do with our uh, rich edit. Uh, the Excel allows me to create either cells or entire worksheet or entire workbooks 
that are protected. That means I created this excellent worksheet in Excel. And in Excel, I said, look, this is my masterpiece. I don't want anybody messing with this. Now, you know, Paul in his own right, our excellent uh, evangelist, you know, he's great at it. And I, let's say I made this simply, uh, simply monthly budget. And I said, hey, Paul, uh, go ahead and set your budget items here, but don't mess with these items. Now, as much as I trust Paul uh, or anybody else, I don't want them accidentally changing these fields. So I, in Excel, I'll, I'll go ahead and protect these fields. But when I go and open this up on an excellent spreadsheet control in the web like this uh, ASPX spreadsheet control, I want to make sure that it's being honored. So if you go ahead and protect those items, when you now open them in the spreadsheet, we'll honor that. So now, if I go ahead and try to edit this, you're going to get a message. The end user will say, it'll, it'll let the end user say, hey, listen, you're trying to change something that is protected, and that's not allowed. I'm sorry. But those items that can be changed will allow the end user to go ahead and change them. And as you saw that, this chart is linked to this data source, and then they can easily update that. All right. Now, another great feature that we've added is the capability for finding items. So let's take a look at a hit F11 here. Let's take a look at another sample document here. I like the sports results here. So in the sports results, let's bring it up here in full screen again. And let's say I want to find this user, Jack Brandel, right? What I can do is I now have the capability to use this new find dialog. This is the same type of find dialog that you'd find in Excel, which is fantastic. It's a great new feature that, you know, uh, we uh, essentially were inspired by Excel. And what it does is now I can type in here and it says, listen, find me a Jack. And when I hit find all, it says, hey, listen, I found three values. And I've got a grid here that tells me the location as well. Because if I have a giant spreadsheet here with a lot of values that I, I need to scroll past here, I'm not going to know where the heck it is. So another handy feature we've added is that says, listen, this is the guy I'm looking for, Jack Brendel. It jumps to the location. And it's fantastic, right? So not only can I get very granular by searching by rows or columns, matching a specific case, or looking in formulas or just values, I can also go to the exact location. So it's a great feature that I think your end users are really, really going to enjoy. Now, another feature I'm happy to say that we've added is printing support. And this is really fantastic because previously, uh, when somebody asked, we'd say, hey, to print, use the print dialog, which is not really what you want to do. I don't want to print all this other junk around it. So what we've done is we've added the capability to print directly from the dialog, so you're only going to print what's necessary. So for example, if I, uh, if I print out, well, let's do this, in, if we did this in a uh, browser with uh, like, in fact, let's do that. Let's do this in IE, because IE allows it to export to PDF. We can see that we get a beautiful, exact rendering of what we'd expect to from our, from our control. So now I get exactly the same spreadsheet. So it's a great feature that you, you can now use with your spreadsheet control. Now. Uh, finally, I want to talk about chart customization. This is a feature that's also uh, inspired by Excel, and it's a very handy feature because when I'm looking at a chart, now I've got the capability to right-click and get this context menu that not only allows me to think, uh, change things like column rows, the layout, the titles, very uh, uh, beautiful chart customization right from this context menu, but I can also change, for example, the chart type. So if I didn't want this and I want to go back to a column type, I can do that very easily and instantly. If I wanted to change the, uh, the data that it's using and say, listen, I don't want to go all the way to row 15. Uh, I want to go or I don't want to start from row 4. I want to start from row uh, 5. I can do that very easily and the chart data will be updated. So very powerful feature that, again, your end users will simply uh, love to use. All right. Next is the uh, feature in the ribbon. Now, I mentioned earlier that we have upgraded our ribbon based on features that we were adding for the rich edit. Now, what's great is that when we add it to a base control like the ribbon, all the other controls are affected. So the spreadsheet, 
the HTML editor that can also use the ribbon. All the controls that use the ribbon get this feature for free, and it's great for you because it's also customizable. So what we found was that we needed dialog launchers. And so we basically took pretty much the exact same button that Microsoft uh, Office uses and added it to the ribbon so that now you have this capability to add not only this dialog launcher, but you can add your own custom uh, dialog. Now, for those controls like the Rich Edit and Spreadsheet, they already have them defined. Of course, you can go ahead and overwrite them, but in the ribbon control, you can define your own item. So it's a great feature. Now, if we take a look at the, let's go back to the Rich Edit here. I wanted to show you is that this is available in all of our controls. And not just that, we've also added a new toggle button. Now we found that this is another feature we were kind of uh, missing and some uh, customers wanted it as well. But it's the ability to have a drop down toggle button. Now in this demo we're not showing it, but you can also allow it to be checked. So that's another great feature of the ribbon that we've added. And we also added a couple of server side events. Because a lot of things happen on the ribbon on the client side, let's say you want to let the server side know that, hey, a command has been executed. So we've added a couple of uh, items. Now, you can read more about this on my blog, uh, and I recommend you do that. So devexpress.com, uh, make hold. All right, let's move on. We've also added, upgraded our date editor. We've added the capability to provide date range functionality. And it's really easy to do this. How do you do this? By using two date editors and linking the two. So really, there's one property that links the two. But from either drop down, you now have this date range where you can select the start date and the end date. And it's a great feature because it also allows you to, to uh, provide validation. So I really like this feature because let's say, for example, I wanted to define and say, listen, the minimum number of days they have to choose is three. Now, when I go ahead and say, listen, the start date is December 2nd and the end date is December 3rd, it says, nope, sorry, listen, the date range has to be from three to six, six five days, right? Or if I say, listen, the, the maximum number of days is 10 and I choose a value that's larger, it's telling me, listen, you've got too many days here. So. It's a very powerful approach that says, I want to just choose, for example, three days here, and now uh, it's going to, uh, oh, I should change the start date, oops. All right, so now it says, uh, if I change it back to one day, I can easily say, go for December 1st to uh, December 2nd, and I got the right number of days. All right. The other awesome feature that I want to display is the capability to show uh, the clear button. Now, you don't really have to do anything to get this, and I think this is a great feature because when your end users are typing a value, they want to be able to just clear it sometimes. They don't always want to go back and say, oh, let me fix one letter or let me hit the backspace. They simply want to say, whoops, I made a mistake, clear it out. And this is a common UI element that you'll find in a lot of web editors. And I'm happy to say the DevExpress editors for WebForms MVC are now supporting the clear button. Now, binary image resizing. This is an awesome feature of the uh, binary image control because it also helps you make faster websites. All right, so let's take a look uh, at this demo. And I'll bring up the... Let me bring up the uh, demo and we'll take a look. We'll bring this up in Firefox. So what the server side uh, resizing allows you to do is let's say you've got a really large image. Well, with the, the larger size, you're gonna get a, a larger set of bytes as well. But if you've got a smaller device, that only shows, for example, 400 by 400 pixels, you want to send less bytes across the wire. 
because especially on mobile, bandwidth is important. The amount of bytes that go across the wire are important. It's important for user experience, but it's also important, for example, for you to save on cost on the server, but definitely user experience should be number one. And what's great is that the binary image now allows you to send uh, a smaller, uh, so it allows you to do server-side resizing. Now, we're gonna have a blog post that gets more into that and how this is a useful feature for you. All right, next up, uh, I really like this feature. This is a, uh, it's a very funny feature because in, in one way, it really showcases a very simple thing. And I call it, it's called, we called it here the sub-page menu, sub-menu display at full page width. But I call it the devexpress.com menu feature. So what is it? Well, if you go to uh, devexpress.com, well, let's first bring up this feature. But if you go to devexpress.com, you're going to find our excellent menu. And a lot of customers said, hey, this is really slick. I want to do that, right? And what's slick about this is that, listen, I've got a page here. I've got my uh, my banner here, and it's it's showing some items. But when I want, I I want to show the user and say, oh, you want to navigate somewhere here? In your face is this giant menu. Pick something, and then I'll get out of your way, right? It's an awesome feature. So I'm happy to say now that you can provide this same functionality to your end users by uh, setting the sub menu display at full page width. So. Uh, as I said, it's the, the feature is really called that, but I kind of like to call it the devexpress.com menu approach. So I think it's a very useful feature for your end users that you may want to just start using right away if you're using the ASPX menu control. All right, let's move on. Next is the uh, next is the uh, feature for the pivot grid that I think is excellent. It's a long time uh, where customers have been asking. And it's server mode. So usually, when you when your pivot grid has a lot of data, and usually if you are using a pivot grid, you probably have a lot of data because you've got a lot of data that you want summarized and totaled and so forth. And that's what the pivot grid allows you to do. It gives you multiple dimensions. You know, grid gives you two dimensions. Uh, pivot grid gives you multiple dimensions that say, listen, give me the extended quantity, uh, the extended price and quantity for the year, quarter, and month for this category and product, right? And you can get very granular. But if you have a lot of data, previously, it wasn't possible to use server mode, which puts the work and keeps your web server running fast and free. Well, I'm happy to say it's in there now, and I recommend you check it out. Now, more than that, we've gone ahead and also enabled virtual scrolling. And virtual scrolling is this feature. So as you see it go down, it's loading data on demand. So as it goes to the right, you're going to see a little dialog pop up here that does a callback that says, oh, I need more data. So it does that, it's getting data uh, as it needs to display. It's a very powerful feature. And finally, we've got vertical scrolling and fixed height. This is also a great feature. So if you want to learn more about all of these features, uh, join my colleague tomorrow, Seth, who's going to be going into the reporting and dashboards and even the HP.net reporting features that we've been working on. We've got this excellent web report designer that is just fantastic. So he's going to cover all of this and more uh, tomorrow, so join him. All right, ASP.NET MVC uh, developers, we have not forgotten you. We've got, finally, the spell checker extension. Now, I say finally because we've had this in web forms for a long time. And it's mostly a non-visual control, meaning that at design time, there isn't really anything that you set other than say, hey, listen, for this editor or this editor, I want to provide this functionality. And so when you do that, I can do it anything from this memo or this text box. And when I bring it up, when I say check spelling, it brings up this dialog for me. And this is a common dialog that you've seen in Word, that your users are familiar with, that says, hey, listen, I find a word that's not in the dictionary. And what's great is you can define what dictionaries to use. We provide a couple of for you, but you, you can make it extensible as well. And because it's customizable for your users, they can say, hey, listen, this is a common word, and it should be in the dictionary. Add it to the dictionary, or ignore it, or change it. It's, it's very powerful, and you can customize it for different languages, and I'm happy to say it's available for MVC. Add it today. This is another functionality that just makes the end user experience better for your customers. Now, the other excellent feature that we've added 
is lambdas. Now, if you're familiar with ASP.NET MVC, lambdas is a feature that allows you better data binding. What, what it means is it's it's a it's a way to data bind. Now, previously, we were when we data binded it in MVC, we had something like settings.columns.add, and in quotes, we'd be putting the column name. Now, that's not the best approach because when you put when you're typing in a string you have the capability of typing it incorrectly, and you don't have uh, the design time benefits of Visual Studio. So for example, at, at design time, I can't say, oh, this, is, this column does belong inside of this view model. But now, with this feature within the grid view and tree list, I can pass in the view model and know that this column actually exists there. So at, I have error checking at design time, I have uh, IntelliSense support, it's, it's excellent. Now, I recommend if you're not using this type of data binding now with grid view and tree list, use it now. Now, it's only with the grid view and tree list in this release. The DevExpress editors have been supporting it since the inception, but as we go forward and we as we hear more from you, we'll go ahead and improve other extensions as well. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the HTML editor. Now, we've added the capability to insert media. So now, in the toolbar in the HTML editor, you can insert YouTube videos, directly from a dialog. Or you can insert a local file that gets uploaded to the server. So if it's a Flash-based file or uh, uh, some file that can be played through your HTML uh, viewer, it can be inserted inside of the HTML editor. We also have clipboard paste processing. This is similar to how you would paste from Word. So when you copy something, if I was to copy this text here, it comes with a set of fonts and styles. And when I paste it into a target area, well, there may be different styles there. Now you can merge the styles, you can do this plain text, and that feature is now available to you in the HTML editor. We also have some features of the file manager that got updated. We've got customer information in the details view, we've got a built-in context menu where you can define your own custom items. They also come with default commands, but you can extend it by adding your own custom items. And we've got the ability to display custom buttons and drop-down items in the toolbar. So, very slick features where the file manager has improved. And we've also upgraded the scheduler. So now you can define in the full week view what the start date of the week is. If it's not Sunday, if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you can do that. So, and we also got better time zone support. Now, uh, this feature uh, I think was a no-brainer and I'm happy you finally added it, is when you, when you do a modal pop-up with our ASPX pop-up control, your users can now hit the escape key to get out of that pop-up dialog. And uh, I'm happy to say that this is how most of modal dialogs work on the desktop and should work on the web. And I'm happy to say, so as you can see, there's a lot of work we do, little things that I think go towards making the end user experience better. Because a, a UI superhero really is somebody isn't just thinking about how it looks, but how it feels. So I think this is a great feature that your end users will appreciate. Now, you'll forgive me, and I'm glad you stuck around, but I, I'm going to borrow the one more thing, because I think this really is the other big story with uh, our 14.2 release for ASP.NET controls, and that is responsive layout. I'm happy to say we waited, I've waited, uh, people kept asking me, what about responsive? Do you do responsive? Do you do... I'm happy to say it's there. Now, many of you uh, have seen the blog post. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about exactly what this is, right? Now, in the past, you've heard me say ASP.NET Server controls like grid view and scheduler, you know, they don't really fit on a phone. And that's still true. But what's great is that we now give you that option to define sites that can be created for just about any screen. Now, I recommend that you still ch decide what your main content looks like. So let's take a look. Here, uh, I've got this capability now to say I can design a website all with DevExpress controls. In fact, I can make a project using a DevExpress uh, project template that can address all sorts of different device sizes. And as we know, in today's mobile-friendly uh, world, there's a million different device sizes that we have to support. No longer can we say, well, it's going to be 800 by 600, or it's going to be... Uh, four by three for the old iPhone 3 or something like that. We just don't know what our end users are going to be viewing our websites in. And so DevExpress helps you here. So let's take a look at this demo. Now, to get to it, uh, you can bring this up inside of 
uh, the uh, demo center. Now the demo center, if you launch ASP or MVC, it will bring up the specific demo center. Now inside of image and data navigation, you will find these demos. Now, let me close this. We've added uh, new functionality to existing controls. So the way we are doing this is using a couple of controls called um, a couple of controls called um, panel and callback panel. So we've had the ASPX panel control and the ASPX callback panel control, but we improved their functionality. <coughs> now, in this demos, when you launch this, you're going to see this little smart tag. And if you scan this from your mobile device, whether it's iPad or mobile, what it will do is actually it will take you to this specific demo and it will load it inside of it inside of that particular uh, mobile device that you're viewing this. Now this technology we borrowed from our uh, Dev Extreme uh, brethren. You know, they've had this uh, awesome functionality where essentially we hook you up to the cloud, you know, using our cloud, uh, we have some cloud services and so forth. So uh, what's important here though is to take a look and see how this feature works. So here I've got a menu, I've got a nav bar, I've got a grid, I've got my logo here, I've got some detail information at the bottom. What happens as I start losing screen real estate? The first thing you notice is, hey, the nav bar, that's gone. And that's a choice that I would probably make that says, listen, I want this nav bar to be hidden. But give me a hamburger menu. This is a popular hamburger menu that gets displayed on things like Bootstrap and so forth. And I'll talk about Bootstrap in a minute. But now I've also got this menu. So what happens if I go even smaller? Well, I've lost my bottom panel here that says, listen, Details are great, but only show them when I ask them. And you can see I've got a little button that displays that. Now what happens if I go even smaller than that? Well now, both the menus have been collapsed. And they'll be available as I touch them. So this is an excellent feature. And it's really easy to implement. And the way we do this is using the panels. Now, I'm not going to get into it because there is a webinar that I think you guys should join me for in a couple of weeks. On December 16th, I'm going to get into how this is done. We're going to take a look at inside Visual Studio and I'm also going to talk about the overall responsive web design story of how to use Dev Express controls in other frameworks like Bootstrap. So please join me for the responsive web design webinar in a couple of weeks where I'll get into all of that. So in the meantime, uh, what I recommend is if you have a site now that you want to create uh, I recommend use the uh, project templates that we are providing. So I've written a whole blog post for it, but whether you're using MVC or web forms, you, you're going to find new responsive web application templates. Now the old ones are still there, and the key difference is the old ones use the splitter control for uh, separating out the sections. In the new one, we're using the panel extensions. So the panels are a little bit more customizable. So let me just create a quick project. Now what's happening here, it's going to create for me all the folders, add the project references, all the good stuff. But when it does that, it's going to give me a layout in a master page that says, here, here's the header section, here's the uh, 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 footer section and so forth. So in here, instead of a splitter, we're using these panels. And these panels have properties like, listen, I want you to collapse when the inner width is this size. So you don't have to do the work of saying, hey, listen, how do I add a media query? How do I def uh, de detect in CSS and so forth? We've done all that work. And you also can define, hey, listen, when you collapse, this is what this is what I want you to show. I want you to show a nav bar. Or no, don't show the nav bar. Just show, for example, uh, a, a certain uh, set of items. So in the full one, I might show uh, all the login controls and so forth. But when it's collapsed, I might show a different set of uh, items. And the panel allows you to do that. Panel says, listen, this is the content you get to show. And it's really flexible, and I think it's beautiful, and it's very customizable. So uh, definitely take a look. Uh, you can uh, do it right from it. And there's a whole set of videos that Amanda and I have been creating about all these new features that will walk you through this. If you really want to get a, a deep down approach for it, join me for that webinar. I'd love to see you there and address any and all questions you may have. Now with that, I will say thank you very much. I truly appreciate uh, you coming today. And if you have further questions, please go ahead. We're gonna, we've got some time now for questions. I'm going to recommend this URL to you, devexpress.com slash new. 
This points to the what's new file that you get in our newsletter. So if you have any questions about these features, this what's new will also points to the blog posts that I've written specifically that get more in depth about how the Rich Edit has that new JavaScript engine and why it's so awesome and so forth. Now, you can also email me directly. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're a fan of Twitter, uh, as I am, please ping me on Twitter as well. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, Mahul. Um, the team has been feverishly working behind the scenes answering the tons of questions that have been coming in. Um, I'm going to see what is left for Absolutely. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, we had a question about Bootstrap. Sure. What was the question? Um, I'm trying to find it. I think someone someone uh, grabbed it. Okay, is it no easy, worries. Is it easy to use DevExpress with Bootstrap? They yes. use it in some projects. Yes. So the short answer is uh, yes. And as I'll explain, in the, in the responsive design, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. The key difference is Bootstrap didn't exist, you know, when we were creating our ASP.NET controls. And Bootstrap is fantastic. I'm a fan of it. Uh, you know, so what, the reason I say it didn't exist is they have developed their own styles and so forth. Now, uh, as we go forward, we'll think about as a team how we mesh the two and how they make sense. The short answer is today you can use DevExpress controls in Bootstrap and they will not collide with the styles. But we also don't have any specific styles that say, hey, go match Bootstrap. There are some that I think that I'll show inside of the webinar that I think kind of match closely. The good news is DevExpress controls are extensible, so you can make your own theme. And uh, you know, th there's nothing stopping you from uh, creating a new Bootstrap theme or creating a DevExpress theme that matches the two. Does the, awesome. rich, uh, da, da, da. Uh, does the new rich text editor support PDF as a format? Yes, I believe I showed that, and not just PDF, multiple formats, EPUB. I'm blown away. So you know, uh, uh, Serge, who's uh, one of the key developers on this, he's actually on the on the webinar right now. Uh, I think he's done a fantastic job. You know, he's he's a brilliant guy, and uh, I'm, I'm stoked that he's added EPUB. Uh, RTF, PDF, HTML, MHD, all of the popular formats. And you know what's great is uh, our guys, you know, we're, we're always, uh, you know, we're always, I will say, stealing, but recruiting from the colleges, you know, all the young minds, the computer science guys. But, you know, our, our seasoned guys, they have been working on this stuff. They, they know what's rock solid. They, they know the features that matter to you. And so when we create a new control like the Rich Edit, you know, we say, okay, well, it's important that we have modern approaches, but at the end of the day, the useful functionality that matters to you, like having the right exporting uh, uh, formats, having the uh, cut, copy, and paste features, you know, those things that matter to you, those are the ones that we are going to nail. And so I believe we've done a really good job, and that's why I ask for your feedback, because honestly, you know, we're not perfect, and, and this is a preview version, and there's going to be things that maybe we missed or things that uh, work differently in different browsers, let us know. We want to make this the best control out there. So when we're actually releasing it, that we have all the information to make it a really great control. Awesome. From Mitchell, does the grid view control allow scrolling? And if not, is it something that's coming up? Yes, it supports scrolling. So this was an interesting question because uh, I was actually talking to a customer recently and uh, they said, well, you know, I, uh, I really wish your grid view control had uh, fixed sc uh, scrolling and fixed columns. Well, we have virtual scrolling, of course, but we've had fixed columns since 2009. And, you know, it surprises me. Now, it, it's twofold, right? W when you're new to a, a product, you don't always get the, uh, the uh, uh, how do you say, time to look at every feature. We get that. So. I recommend you ask us, you know, our support guys, they are fantastic. Ask them about a feature if you're curious. Hey, does your grid support this, right? Ask me. I'll be happy to tell you. So there's a ton of things it does, and uh, you may not be aware of them. And if you'd like to know, yeah, I'm happy to answer. So even this virtual scrolling we've had for many years, right? So that as you scroll down, it, go, it goes and virtually loads the next set of uh, items and so forth. 
Um, all right, let's see. Of course, we've got uh, what is the release date of 14.2, and all I can say to that is this week, this week. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you I'm heard sorry, it. Sorry, that's so vague. But you heard it here. This hey, week. Uh, look. If Amanda says this week, it is this week. So <laughs> well, we got to get on it. All right, guys. You know, code freeze. But no. In all seriousness, uh, you're right, Amanda. Thank you. This week uh, is something we're targeting. Um, and thank you very much. If you've been playing with the beta, if you've been giving us feedback, we've taken all that. Uh, yeah, and it's something uh, we're absolutely targeting soon. Uh, does the date range control allow for time selection? The date range does allow for time selection. Uh, let's see if I have that editor open. Um, 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 um. Uh, yes, there we go. So uh, the 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 way we did it was we incorporated it right inside of. Uh, so there's a separate time editor. But if you go to the date editor and you hit the drop down, we added it right here on the side. So you still got the date editor, which is fantastic and works the way you want it to. But we also got this time editing capabilities built right in. So you can either type it in or you can use this little dialog. I can even use the keyboard to change this around. So it's, uh, I believe, really fantastic. And it goes further to let you define different format strings, uh, what the mask should be, whether it should be, there should be a display format string. All sorts of awesome features. Uh, what about TypeScript? Are we compatible? Well, TypeScript is really for uh, client side. Now, if you're asking, does DevExpress uh, HP.NET controls that have a lot of client side functionality, can you work with it in TypeScript? Uh, you know, I would say if you're doing heavy JavaScript things like you do with our uh, JS controls, then TypeScript makes sense. Most functionality, for example, the date editor here has client-side functionality. Uh, let me see if I can show you the grid view control. The kind of things you're going to do with our client-side is not something you really want to have heavy JavaScript for. So the short answer is no, but that's because we don't see a good scenario for it, right? If you're going to tell me that, yes, you use, there's nothing to say you can't use. The way TypeScript works is TypeScript essentially compiles to JavaScript, right? So in your TypeScript, you can say, listen, I know there's an ASPX client spreadsheet, and I want you to address it, right? So, but you're not going to get, because we don't necessarily support TypeScript, you're not going to get all of the uh, sort of goodies that come with TypeScript with IntelliSense and so forth. But typically, you're not going to do a whole lot of heavy lifting with our clients and controls. The reason is because these are server-side controls. At the end of the day, ASP.NET is a server-side technology. And that's really the long and short of it, right? It's not that we don't want to. It's just that it has to make sense when we support something. So I could be completely wrong, right? If you have a great scenario and you say, oh, well, you're totally missing this scenario. This is why we need TypeScript support. Let me know. You know, We'll investigate it. We'll find out how it can benefit everybody. And then what makes sense, we'll absolutely add it into there and uh, make a great story for it as well. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, we'll take just a couple more questions since we are out of time. But any way to easily upgrade an MVC existing web app with responsive layout? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the panel extension is uh, something new that we added. So, uh, you know, I didn't mention that earlier is that in MVC, I'm sorry, I'm showing you web forms here, but in MVC, um, what I would recommend is use the, uh, until we do the webinar, and I'll show an MVC version as well, but until we do the webinar, use this uh, MVC responsive web application template so you get an idea of how we're doing it, and then you can simply apply it to your MVC project. So there's an MVC extension called ASPX, uh, I'm not ASPX, sorry, panel, devexpress.panel, if you look at H the HTML helper that we have, html.devexpress.panel, and aspx.callback panel. And the reason I recommend it taking a look at this is so you can see the approach we've done. And because there's no designer in MVC, that's another reason I, uh, I, I welcome you to look at not just this approach, but also look our, our online uh, demos. Now, we haven't updated the demos yet because we haven't released it, but if you go to mvc.devexpress.com, you're going to find all of our samples. Again, it's not up yet, but it will be. So it'll be under navigation and layout. 
and there'll be a new section that says uh, panel, uh, similar to the other one uh, that I showed you earlier. So you'll see something like panel for MVC, and you'll have the same uh, demos as well. And you can see how we're doing it with the different files. So again, with MVC, it's going to have a, a slightly different approach. You're going to look at the, the view screen, and you want to look at under shared and see how we're doing it for, for example, content left partial. And you know, I've got a, a nav bar. Uh, I'll look at the header view. And uh, you can see exactly how we're rendering the uh, separate items. So definitely take a look at it. Start from the from the layout settings, right? So in the layout, we've got a panel. This, listen, I've got a, a left one. I believe the root one is the, the main one. But you in, in this approach, you're not going to find a designer. So you're not going to really get an idea of like, OK, how do we do it? But you know, MVC is a different approach. And, you know, I, if you if you don't work in the source view, I recommend working in the source view just so that you can kind of get an idea. So you can just see here, look, in the main body, I've got a header, and I'm defining how that header expands, right? So what I'm what I'm definitely what I'm basically going to show, and what happens when I lose uh, pixels less than 500? What should happen? Well, I'm going to set an expand template, uh, and I've got a, a bar as well, and I've so I've got different views for that, and then I've got a main panel. Right? And so then I'm defining what happens in the main panel. So take a look at this. I think you'll get, uh, a, it's very, it's pretty easy to figure out in my opinion. And, uh, and that's because I think we've taken a, a very good standard approach at it. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you all for all of your questions. Um, and to the team and to Mawul for really plowing through them there. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, thank you very much to the team. Thank you for everybody. Uh, I, I'll just simply say, I just uh, I, as a program manager, for me, feedback is important. You know, we take it to the devs, and uh, you know, we put our heads together and we make it better. So, thank you very much, Amanda. Awesome. All right, coming up this week, more 14.2 launch webinars tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. What's new in reporting and dashboards with analytics program manager Seth. Juarez, and it's a two-webinar day, HTML5 and mobile, DevExtreme, presented by DevExpress, DevExpress Technical Evangelist Paul Usher at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And Thursday, December 4th, 10 a.m., XAF, also presented by Seth Juarez, and Friday, December 5th, What's New in Code Rush with the Mark Miller. Again, seating is limited for these 14.2 launch webinars, so register today for your spot at devexpress.com slash webinars. We also have several other upcoming webinars. I think Mahul already showed earlier, the DevExpress ASP.NET connecting your site to the cloud, uh, responsive web design with DevExpress, and making the transition from web forms to ASP.NET MVC. And those are going into January 2015. All right, that is it for this one. Thank you so much to Mahul. Thank you all for joining us, and of course, Thank you for choosing DevExpress. Bye-bye.